Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the go-to crochet shawl by Yarnspirations and this is a textured shawl and in the original you'll see that it's one color but you can actually use two colors and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Let's go right to the pattern now. Let's take a look. You'll notice that this is textured on one side. You will see that it's raised up and then the other side is more flat. I almost like the other side a little bit better but of course in order to have this kind of look you have to texture something right. So let's uh, get uh, looking at the pattern and let's see what we're gonna get involved with today. So today's pattern is a two pager and what it's gonna be is gonna be a repeat pattern and once you get started right off the bat um, it's just a matter of uh, just continuing along and once you get it into your head you can probably put this away and just remember what you need to do. At least that's what's happened for me. It's a skill level number easy recommending a Karen one pound and a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook. The fun stuff of course is on page number two and at the time of filming this there's actually an error in this diagram. I'll show you that but in the future you will probably see what I'm about to show you as being gone. So I want to cover those bases just in case that you are following along on that crochet diagram instead of the written words. The written words are accurate. So let's take a look closer at the diagram and let's see what we're gonna get involved with today. So here's the crochet diagram. Everything that you need to know for the stitches that you see are right here in the stitch key. What I want to point out to you is if you get to see a version and you see that this treble has nothing attached to it, you will see it here at the time of filming it's true, then what's gonna happen is that I want you to eliminate that out. So just circle it or cross it out and then you will not bother. In the future I think that you'll see that disappear here and I've already put in a revision for our friends at Yarnspirations. So it's a repeat pattern and once we get started it's just a matter of just creating this shell like uh, shell like shapes and once you get started you'll see that the repeat pattern is rows number six and seven. So the reason why they put the repeat there is that it's showing you how to do the spaces. So every time you leave an extra space you will have more and more of these shells appear. So um, for example you see a space here or here so there's a shell here but next time you'll see a space here, here and here. So it increases by one shell every uh, pass that you do when you get to that. So they work on behalf of each other. So what I would recommend to you if you're gonna change the colors like I did keep rows one and two the same color and then three and four the same and then five and six the same. So keep it so that it looks like it's all one color within two rows. Of course you don't have to change the color if you prefer the texture and let the light play with it. So when you're looking at here what you're seeing is two rows. So you'll notice that the first row of the two has the texture. It's lifting up. Let me just choose a different color there. It's easier to see. And so you'll see that it's lifting up and then the secondary color that here uh, sorry the other color here is the one row. So when you're looking at that this is the gray here and then this is the other part of the gray on this uh, one and then I change the colors. So if you change the colors you end up with tails on the one side but that's okay. That is part of the creativity and excitement today. So what I wanna do is I wanna get you started and then we're gonna be uh, playing along and let's get in rock and roll now. So let's begin. It's a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook for transparency. I'm using a six millimeter size K. Of course you can decide what works for you and I'm using Karen one pound. So I'm actually using the same color. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to start off with a uh, uh, slip knot and then chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And once you get your 10 I want you to slip stitch it to the beginning chain to form a ring and it's gonna be a really big ring right in there and so yarn over and pull through it all of it and I want you to keep that straggler so it's part of the circle so that you can bury it in the next round. Let's let, let's move on now to row number one and one and two if you're gonna do the colors it will be one and two and then if you wanna change the colors three and four is the next and etc. So let's begin row number one. In row number one we're going to start and we need to just uh, start opening it up. So let's do that. So we're gonna chain four. So that's gonna count as your first treble. And then it says to do seven trebles into the center of this ring. So in the sides here when you're starting the pattern there will always be like eight trebles that are uh, sitting beside it. So if you look at it here this is the here. Okay sorry it's here and then you have seven more. So it gives you a total of eight and you'll always see kind of the eight number only on the edge you will not see it up here. Okay so just keep that in mind. So let's do seven trebles. So wrap the hook twice and going into the center of the ring and let's uh, begin to do that. And we want a total of seven. So wrap twice and in. So let's count. So I'm going to just for transparency this is what I would do if I were you and you weren't watching me. I count the first chain three as one and then I say two and three and my goal for the end here is just to make sure that there's a total of eight. So one, two, three and four, 
five. And I'll explain to you why I say it's eight. Okay, so there's six, seven, and eight. So the reason why I count it to eight is actually pretty simple. If you look at it from the other side of the diagram, on this side there is eight. So remember this counts as the first treble. So there's eight going up and then eight coming down. So that only exists then on the edge only. It doesn't exist up here. So I just say it's eight going up and then eight coming down. And uh, this is the only time that you'll see uh, that except for on the very edges. Okay, so let's uh, get the other side of this done. So we're gonna just chain one and we're gonna put eight trebles going down the other side. My, my idea for the final uh, eight, I want you to, to actually select the chain. I don't want you to go into the center of the ring. And the reason why I'm doing that is that I want you to nail the idea of it holding the chain because these are all kind of free floating on one chain but if you nail that last one right into a chain it'll lock it in permanently so it will never shift on you. And if that's important for you then that's what I would do if I were you and that's exactly what I did in my sample. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There you go. So do you see how it kind of like goes almost all the way around? So what I want you to do is pull it back and it's gonna be about the fifth chain. So just kind of count it. So one, two, three, four, five. So the last one, the eighth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's my eighth. Let me just redo the eighth one. And on the eighth one, I want you to put it right into the actual chain itself, not to the ring. So just sliding it into a chain stitch. And what that will do is it'll prevent anything on this side from sliding further over so it'll keep it nice and open. And I have my loose end in that I want to secure out. So that would be row number one. Okay, so not much is happening yet. We're gonna turn and work and then move on to row number two. So in row number two we're gonna chain up a total of six. So the first three is the first double crochet and the other three are the chain three space. In the next seven you're gonna do um, a front post double crochet. So what this is gonna do, it's going to put the texture on the opposite side as you're working. And then once you get to the top it's gonna be chaining a five and then you jump immediately then to the next available one here and front post double crochet the other seven that are left and then chain three and then um, do a treble right in the very end here. What I would recommend to you is watch this space right here. This space here I kept forgetting to do that in, on my sample and I had to keep frogging because I would realize it immediately once it turned. So just keep an eye. Every other uh, row has that space that's in the beginning if you look at it from a consistent point of view. Let's begin row number two. So let's begin row number two. Chain six. So one, two, three. There's a double crochet. Four, five, and six. That is your chain three space. Now starting in the very next one I want you to do a front post double crochet. So just if you're new to crochet just wrap and come in the side of the post and back out the other side and stay to the front side of the work and just double crochet. And I want you to do all seven that are left. Right until you get to that chain one space. Now you can count them but if you look for that chain one space you can save the counting and keep watching TV. Up to you, your call. So my chain one space is next. I can see it. So I wanna verify. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm gonna go up over top of the point so it's gonna be chaining five. So one, two, three, four, five. And immediately start in the very next post and front post double crochet the next seven. You just have to remember the eighth one that's left is going to have that space and then a treble right into the last one. So essentially I'm looking until I get to the turning chain and then I make the decision of what I'm doing next. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So chain three and then in the last turning chain, don't go to a space, go right into the chain itself. I want you to do a treble. 
and then that prepares you then for the next row. So turn your work and you see voila there's the texture. Let's move on to row number three. So in row number three we're going to chain up three counts as your first double crochet and then what's gonna happen is that in this chain three space which you need you're going to put in seven trebles right into that space. You're then going to single crochet the middle one of the grouping of seven. Okay so just skip the first three go to the fourth it's the middle. Here because of uh, the date I'm filming this doesn't belong here. So what I want you to do is just put in seven double uh, trebles going up chain one, seven trebles going down into this chain five space. Then immediately single crochet into the middle one of the grouping of seven and then in the last space I want you to put in a total of seven double crochets or seven uh, trebles and then remember how we kind of secured the chain here. I want you to put this one into the, around the third one or the fourth so that it will lock it in to prevent it from kind of wanting to go around that. So it just is a locking mechanism. Let's begin row number three. So let's begin. We're gonna chain three counts as a double crochet and in this big space I want you to put in seven double crochet or seven trebles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now once you get your seven in you wanna go to the next grouping here and look for the middle one. It's the fourth one in. Okay so you're just gonna single crochet just to hold that down and then immediately jump to your next space here which happens to be um, the top uh, tip, tipping point of your shawl. It's not always gonna be that every time you're gonna be uh, gaining spaces as we go. So we're going to then put in seven trebles going up into that chain five space. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then chain one and then coming down in that same space for another seven. So stay in that same space that's creating the point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven up, chain one, seven down, all within that same spot. Now immediately just come into the middle one of the grouping of seven and single crochet and then you have one more space here which is the last. So you'll put in seven trebles first. So let's count those. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And once you get your seven in there you gotta put in one more treble but this time I want you to lock it into about the third one. So one, two, three. So lock it right into the actual chain work itself and then that prevents it from sliding around. That is a, a call you can make on your own. That's what I would do if you were me and you weren't watching me. Okay so that concludes number three. So let's turn our work and go for number four. So this is the back side of the project number four. So number four we're gonna start up and it's exactly what you already know for row number two. The only difference now is that we're gonna start having spaces going in between the shelves that you see. So you're gonna chain up six which is your double crochet chain three and then you're gonna do a front post double crochet in the next seven that are left. You're gonna chain three which creates the space for this in the future and then the next seven here they're gonna be front post double crochets. Chain five as always to go up over the tip and then come seven down. Again ignore this one. It's not supposed to be there. Chain seven and then immediately do the next sorry chain three and then immediately do the next seven and then don't forget at the end chain three and then a treble right into the very uh, turning chain. This is row number four. Let's begin. 
So let's begin number four. We're gonna chain a total of six. So one, two, three is your first double. Four, five, six is your chain three space. Starting in the next treble, you wanna do front post double crochet. And you wanna do all seven of those that are left. So am I counting? No, not really. I trust myself. But if you wanna count, the number is seven. Once you get that done, you're going to chain three and then skip and go to the next treble over here. So the next seven are each gonna be a front post double crochet. And this happens to be the peak of the, of the point of your shawl. You may wanna verify that there's seven, but unless you trust yourself like I do, I'm not gonna bother. So this seven is in and now you're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. You're creating the large space like you did before and then start immediately on the next one going a front post double crochet. And you're just gonna keep working that along. So there's gonna be a total of seven. You can count it if you wish or you can just trust in yourself. Now remember to jump over to the next set. You have to chain three and this is gonna create a new space for you to have a new shell work in the future. So come immediately to the next uh, treble and do a front post double crochet for the next seven. So there's actually technically eight here because it's the ending but what I want you to do is that I want you to uh, make sure that we are um, going to finish the last one with this, uh, leaving a new space. Sorry, I was getting sidetracked in my mind. It's sometimes hard to film because you gotta keep an eye on everything. So let's uh, continue. So you gotta chain three to finish and then a treble right into the turning chain. So don't go into a space, go right into the chain itself and then that'll conclude that round, our row off. And you can turn it around and you can see the new spacing happening and let's begin the next round. So we're now gonna begin row number five. You're gonna chain up three and in this chain three space you're gonna put seven. And like we did before you're gonna put in a single crochet in the middle one of the grouping of seven and then in the next space put seven in. So I put another one single crochet in the middle of the group of seven and then you're going to put seven crochets or uh, trebles going up and then chain one, seven coming down and immediately just put in a single crochet in the middle and etc. So the only thing that you can see differently as we're going now is that every time you complete one of these blue ones, the, the um, front post double crochet rounds, you're creating a new space where another fan will appear in the future. Do you see that? So once you can understand that you can go as big as you need to go so there's no ending. The only thing is is that it says here, it says repeat six and seven. So what they're telling you to do ultimately is that they want you to finish the last row to be looking like this, okay, with these five or sorry, these seven like this. And the reason for that is that the very last row they want you to play with that, okay. So they want you to play with that row as being the finish so that the final row can look in balance. So let's continue again and let's move on to row number five. So chain three to begin and then you're gonna put seven trebles in the first chain three space. So we'll count these out. So I'm hoping that you understand is that you're creating new spaces every other, every, so you're getting basically every other row you're creating a new space feature. I think that's the right term. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure. So sometimes what I like to do is just ram them in and not count as they go. So I'm just gonna count now. So don't include the first chain three unless you wanna count that as one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there should be a total of eight all the way across or one chain three and then seven trebles depending on how you wanna look at it. Then you're going to put in a single crochet in the middle one. And then you're gonna put in another seven into the next chain three space. Now in the original sample sometimes that I may have accidentally put in eight trebles. So you can always, uh, th this pattern I found with myself you can cheat it um, sometimes. If you wish um, you can just kind of <laughs> do what you need to do sometimes instead of having a froggy work especially it gets bigger. So if you accidentally put in uh, eight trebles you know you can always work it out later as far as like manipulating the stitches a bit. Okay so I got seven 
and then I'm gonna put in one single crochet in the middle and then here in the point I wanna start off and I wanna put seven So that's three, this is four, five, six. And my yarn's just a little tangled behind the scenes here. Six and it was seven going in. So once I get that one in there just chain one and immediately come down into the same space for seven. This pattern once it's in your head it gets really to be quite easy and it's all, it's not brainless but it's pretty close. And brainless just means that there's not a lot of thought power to it. Once you get started and you get the idea going in your head. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and then come to the middle one of the grouping of seven, single crochet, and then put in another seven into the next big space that you have. So the only difference in this row versus the rest of them is that you'll have more spaces appearing as you're working your way through. So what I'm gonna just do is quickly just do an explanation and then I'm gonna show you the final row because ultimately it's just a matter of repeating what you already can, what you already know to do so far. Okay, single and then the final space. We'll get a total of seven and then I want you to, the eighth one I want you to put it right into a chain and lock it. And the eighth one I want you to just open up the, just shift things over so you can see it and go right into a chain work itself. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. So the only difference now when you go to turn it, you're going to uh, complete then the um, back or front post double crochets again. And when you do that, you're gonna see that it's gonna create an additional space here and here. So then you'll have two more additional shells here and then you will just do your topping as normal. So what you have to do up there in order to make it work. So when you go back to the pattern, let's go back to the pattern really quickly and then I'm gonna show you the final row because it's just a matter of repeating what you already know at this point. So as you complete the next row, row number six, you're going to start up, you're gonna chain your um, six, so it's your double crochet, chain three, and then you're gonna put in your front post double crochets, chain three, and front post double crochets. So you're essentially creating another space right here and here. So you can see that there's one space there, and then you continue your top as normal, and then your space and space. And so the next time when you go to do this, is that you will just fill in the space as you go. See that? And then you just keep on going and so you'll end up with an extra shell shape every second row. Okay, so every second, so one and two every second. So what I want you to do is that you're gonna go as big as you wanna go. The instructions say to stop when it is approximately 60 inches wide across the top. You can stop whenever you feel like it. So if you wanna make a child size, just don't go as big, just, um, just do it smaller. And then what we want to do is that you wanna finish off on a row that has these seven trebles that are like this not this row because what we're gonna do then in the next row which is the final I'm gonna show you how to finish off this shell just like that. So let's begin to do that next. So right now we're about to do the border. So we're literally going to go across the edge of this and then all the way around all three points. So at this point we just finished off this row so we don't wanna turn our work so we just immediately wanna turn it um, so it's upside down. So don't turn it over. Okay, so keep these texture uh, towards you. So all you just need to do is that you are going to evenly space on this side all the way across the, the back edge of the shawl of just a single crochet around the post that you see. And when I say evenly space, just make, make it look like it belongs. So I put three into that post. I'm gonna put another three into this one. 
So if it starts to buckle up on you which means that it's folding in it means it's too tight and if it's starting to really wave on you it's too loose. So just uh, try to evenly space it. So it's about three single crochets in each one of these posts going all the way across. So it's kind of an easy way to remember that if you would like to do that or just evenly space it to what you see is something that you want to do for yourself. So the back edge is nice and uh, flat just like this and then we're gonna be doing some texture work then once we get around to the other side. So just go all the way across. I'll see you in the first corner. When you get all the way to the other side you can see it's nice and flat so it's not doing anything crazy. You wanna put into the corner stitch th uh, three single crochets so that it will turn and not buckle on you. You're immediately then going to start in the first treble that you have and you're going to single crochet and then chain two and then single crochet back into sorry slip stitch into the first chain. So just slip stitch into the first chain so it's one below and then immediately jump to the next one. So come to the next one single crochet chain two and then just slip stitch into the second chain. And what this is doing it's putting a little bit of texture on the edge. If you don't wanna do that you can pretty much there's no crochet place if you don't wish to do that. That's up to you and you have to make what uh, do with what's right for you. So you're gonna do that up all on your um, all up on your stuff here all the way across and just follow it and then eventually you're gonna come into the spacing here and I'm gonna show you what to do with that. We still have to jump the spacing So the this kind of like pico kind of idea is just helping to break up the stitch work a little bit so it's not so flat. Again you can make up your own mind. So you're gonna come into the last one. They want you to chain two and then jump over then to the next group here and start. And so you're gonna end up with an edge that is more pico based instead of flat. Again your choice on what you wanna do. So you wanna do that all the way up and then just chain two space over here and then you just wanna come up all the way here chain two and then come down and just like that going all the way to the edge and on the very edge when you get there you just wanna put in uh, two more double cro uh, single crochets right here and then join it with the slip stitch and then that would be the conclusion for this particular shawl. So this is the go to shawl. It's really not a hard shawl. If you don't wanna do the border you don't have to but I'd probably recommend doing the, the back edge just like you see here. It looks a little bit more finished and I think it would be good to go. So until next time have a good one. It's Mikey on behalf of the Courtesy Crowd. So with my friends over at yarnspirations.com.